famous for quality the world over. World's largest manufacturer of super-powered radios. The first high-fidelity television set ever built for the American public. Full-fidelity radio phonographs. Philco, famous for advanced design in refrigerators, in home freezers, in electric ranges, and air conditioners for home and business, presents the Philco Television Playhouse. Tonight's play, Ernie Barger is 50, by Tad Moselle. See that singing, Chester? Must be picnickers clear down by the river. Yeah, voices carry on a hot night. Oh, it's not the heat that makes them carry, Chester. Oh, no. Those picnickers are feeling good. That's what it is. Right now, at this moment, everything's all right with them. And that always carries. Summer, winter, whenever you want. Boom! <laughs> See? I bet they heard that clear across the Ohio Valley. Hey, you're feeling pretty good, too. You bet I am. Roy getting out of college tomorrow, graduating, my son. Yeah, I know, Mr. Park. How about that, Chester? Roy graduating from college. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> I bet they heard that in Pittsburgh. <laughs> You're gonna work all night, Ernie. Just till I get my desk cleared off, Abby, that's all. Gotta get my desk cleared off if I'm going away tomorrow. I wanted to think you were going away for a month instead of two days. <laughs> <laughs> two days is a long time. Don't want to leave these things on my desk. Let Chester take care of them, Ernie. He knows as much about the business as you do, don't you, Chester? Hmm? Well, not quite, Mr. Abbott. <laughs> sure you do. Why, you could stay away for a year and we wouldn't even know you were gone. Now, what do you think of that, huh? I think you're kidding me, Abby. <laughs> That's all right. Have your joke. <laughs> no, if it wasn't for Roy's commencement, I wouldn't be going away at all. I know you wouldn't, Ernie. Ah, it's hard to believe he's that old, isn't it, Abby? Well, I've reached the point where it's not hard for me to believe of anybody being old. Remember when he used to come down to the office with me on Saturday when he was just a kid? Now, don't start telling all those old stories. <laughs> that kid, Chester, yeah. I'd be sitting there at my desk concentrating, not keeping an eye on him, mm. and hanged if he wouldn't go out there into the plant and get a couple of dishes before they were glazed, you know, yeah. and draw faces on them. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd send them on through. <laughs> well, soon, about a week or so, we'd start getting the letter. <laughs> How about that, Abby? Remember that? Yes, I remember. Remember the time he started oh, to learn? That's <laughs> not funny. I've got to go. And you've got work to do. Now, have a good time tomorrow and give Chester my congratulations. You will bet it? I will. You ready to leave, Chester? It's all right to Mr. Barger. Uh, you go ahead, Chester. Run along. I'll tend to things here. You're sure you don't need me, huh? No, these are things I better tend to myself. Okay, then. So long, Ernie. Good night, Abby. I wish you'd think over these new designs before you reject them, Mr. Barger. They'd sell, I know they would. Oh, you're talking through your hat, Chester. That kind of thing is very popular right now. Popular with who? Oh, people want a dinner plate to look like a dinner plate, not an acanthus sleeve. Hey, well, Chester! It's... Yeah, I'll be right there. Oh, you forget about these, Chester. When the time comes to start making a new line, I'll figure something out. <laughs> okay, Mr. Barger, you're the boss. Good night, Chester. Good night, Mr. Barger. To my head, wherever I may roam, on land or sea or foam, you can always hear me rejected.
I'm a tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink about an hour Ernie. ago. Ernie. Hmm? How do I look? Oh, fine. Just fine. And it looks right to my hands. This is a new dress. Miss Alport made it for me. Go, go, go. Miss Alport says that I shouldn't wear print. I like print. Uh, are you sure I look all right, Ernie? Fine. And it went right to my hand. Do you think it's dressy enough, Ernie? Of course, I don't know what the other mothers are wearing. I've got no idea. I, I could wear the navy blue, but uh, that wrinkles and gets linty. And, and then, of course, I wore it all last summer. Of course, no one at the graduation would know that I wore it all last summer, but still... Would you rather that I wore that, dear? You look fine in anything. Well, thank you, dear. You look nice, too. It's an awfully pretty tie. Did you have the car polished? Car is all shined up. And the brakes fixed? Did you tell him to look at the brakes, Ernie? Yeah, the brakes are all taken care of. to get out into the middle of the road and have something happen. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Look at my hands, I Ernie. Drink There's a funny home. rash all over them, but, but it's underneath the home. skin. It doesn't come through. Look, dear, you can see uh. those funny red blotches, but they don't break out. They just itch. Isn't that funny, though? Is that too bad, dear? Did you uh, call the doctor? Oh, it's nothing serious, truly. It's uh, just funny. Uh, what do you think I'm on? Calamine lotion. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink about an hour ago. And it went right to my head. Wherever I may roam. I'm a land or sea or Ernie, home. I can't go. Now, Mary Ella. I, I can't go. I, I don't feel good. I don't feel at all good, Ernie. Is it your hands? Yes, it, it's my hands, but, but my side, Ernie, it hurts. My, my side hurts. And all that driving will only make it hurt more. It's less than a hundred miles. Over bad roads. Look, dear, it's a nice day. There won't be much traffic. I'll drive slow. You always drive slow, Ernie. You, you're a good driver. There you see. Come on. You want to be there, don't you? It's Roy's commencement. Just think, Roy's graduating from college. We're going to stay in a hotel, and we're going to eat in restaurants, and we're going to have a good time and sing like picnickers. I, I, I'm just not up to it. There it is. Oh, gee, Mariella, you could lie down in the back seat. All that confusion and all that excitement, the crowds and uh, everyone staring at me, wondering whose mother I am. Oh, maybe you'll feel better by then. No, I, I'm sorry to spoil all of our plans, but there it is. I can't go. Please, Mariella, couldn't you make a little effort just this once? There's no effort left in me, Ernie. I don't think you want to go. No, I, I don't want to go, so I make my side hurt. Oh, I just don't want to go. Oh, what kind of a does that for you to feel, Mariella? Your own son graduating from college and you don't want to go. Your own son. We've looked forward to this for years. You have, Ernie. We've worked for it and planned for you it. You have, Ernie. You have. And so has Roy. He's counting on us to be there. Roy doesn't care whether I'm there or not. Oh, what do you say a thing like that for? You know it isn't true. It is true. Roy hasn't cared about me since he was in sixth grade and I used to go to school during visiting days. And then he'd sneak me through the back corridors and wouldn't introduce me to his teachers. And then he'd put me in a corner so that no one could see me. All the other mothers were in the front row, you can be sure. Oh, no, 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 Roy doesn't care about me at all. And I don't think he cares much about you either, if you'd only believe it. Please, Mariella, I want to go. Well, I want to lie down. I just want to lie down. All right, then. Lie down. You're not going without me, are you, Ernie? I don't want to disappoint Roy. He's expecting us to be there. And if you won't go, I'll just have to go without you. And Roy and I'll have to have a good time without you. I don't like to be left alone, Ernie. Then come along.
I'll call you tonight to see how you feel. Roy and I will drive down sometime tomorrow. Is this what you get? Not much, is it, for all that money? I'd like you to meet Tom Bates, a friend of mine. How do you do, Tom? Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you, Mr. Parker. Where's Mother? Ernie. Oh, she didn't come. Didn't come? Say, look at that, will you? Bachelor of Arts. Bachelor of Arts? What happens when you get married, huh? <laughs> Why didn't Mother come? Oh, one of our little upsets, Roy, you know. Yes. Sorry, she didn't come. Oh, don't let that bother us now. She'll be all right till we get home tomorrow. As a matter of fact, maybe it's just as well she didn't come. Know what I mean, Tom? Know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Where can I buy you fellas a drink? A drink, Jack. Sure, we're going to hoop it up tonight, son, you and me. And you too. Yes, sir. We're going to have a good time. Show me the way to go home. Thanks, Mr. Margaret. I've got to get down to the chapel. Oh, what's going on down the chapel? It's just a sing, Dad. Well, let's go to the sing. I like to sing. I'm tired and I want yeah, to go Tom, to bed. You go ahead, and I'll take Dad over to the central for a while and see you later. Okay, but it's almost four o'clock, Roy. Glad I met you, Mr. Barker. Ernie! Come on, Dad. Oh, would, wouldn't you rather go to the sing, Roy? I'll go anywhere you want to go. I want you to buy me that drink. Fine. I had a little drink about an hour ago, and it went right to my head. Oh, it's late now. Julie, oh. better go. Gotta return oh, those cap and gowns. Listen, we'll see you later. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Hi there. How are you? Oh, Hello, boy. Oh, 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 here it is, Dan. This? What kind of a place is this? There's nobody here. I guess they've all gone to the sink. I'd just as soon go to the sink, Roy. If you want to. I don't. Let's sit up here. Oh, well, fine. And you know, son, I thought tonight we'd get that Tom Bates and a couple of the fellas and... Oh, what do you want, Jack? Uh, guess I'll, uh, just have a beer. A bottle of draft. Well, now, what's the difference? Two bottles, please, Eddie. <laughs> You've been here before. Oh, everybody comes here. <laughs> grown up, aren't you, Roy? Bachelor of Arts, call them bartenders by their first names, grown up. Yes, Dad. Ah, that looks good. You... Oh, never saw you drink beer before, Dad. I guess it's about time you found out your old man has a few vices, Roy. There's a lot you don't know about me, but you'll find out. Of course, I wasn't a college man like you, but still and all, we used to cut up plenty down by the bridge. Let me tell you, Roy. I guess there's a lot you don't know about me, too. Then we'll find out about each other together. This is the beginning, Roy. That's what commencement means, doesn't it? The beginning? The beginning for me. And for your old man, too. I wish you'd stop calling yourself my old man. <laughs> I guess I should at that. I don't feel like one. Dad, you've always made such a fuss over that diploma. Always the diploma. Getting Roy through college. Well, now you've got it. You've got what you've always looked forward to. And can't you see this? This? I never looked forward to this, Roy. I never made a fuss about this. What do you take me for? <laughs> I guess you do have a lot to learn about me. No, sir. I look forward to this day, this day, mind you, because today you stop being my son and you start being my friend. I guess that sounds corny, but it's the way I feel. Yes, sir, that's the way I feel. 
I've never had many friends. Not that people don't like me, understand, but I've always worked too hard down at the office to have time for them. And at home, well, your mother's not very social-minded, you know. So, I've never had many friends. You know, people you could talk to and sit and drink a beer with. But uh, it's never bothered me because I could always get along by myself. And I always knew today was coming. But we had to get this out of the way first. We had to get past all that father-son business. We had to stop being a duty to each other. Well, here we are. You sure you don't want to go to the sing, Roy? Dad, do you think you should have left Mother alone? Oh, she'll be all right. She might need you. She won't. I hate to think of her sitting all alone while we're off having a good time. Maybe you ought to go back this afternoon. No, Roy. I wouldn't mind, Dad. I'd understand, honest. No, sir. We're going to sit here and we're going to finish our beers. Then we're going to get that Tom Bates and some of the other fellas. And we're going to go out and we're going to have a good time. We're going to really have a nice evening. And I'm the old man, too. The thing is, Dad, I've made other plans for tonight. There's a lot of activity around here. All right, Roy. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. This is your day. I was counting on Mother being here with you. I didn't think of your being alone. Oh. I thought you'd have her for company. Well, that's all right, Roy. You go right ahead with your plans. Well, what'll you do? Oh, I'll go back to the hotel, sit around, catch up on the magazines. And then you and I'll drive home together in the morning. I promised to drive down with Tom. He has his car and he asked me to, so I said I would. You see, Donna, I thought you'd have Mother with you. Hey, Roy! Oh, here he is. Come on over, Tom, and have a beer. Oh, thanks, Mr. Barger, but we're in kind of a hurry. You coming, Roy? I'm coming. After all, it's for you. I'll be there in a minute. Okay, but you've got to turn in your cap and gown. Hey, it getting... looks like you fellas have girls waiting. So that's it. Well, you'll need a little money. No, Dad, I've got enough. Oh, come on. The car's right outside, Roy. When you're ready. Yeah, I said you were to have a good evening tonight, and uh, we're going to be on the old I've man. I've got enough. I know how much you have, Roy. I've saved some. How could you have saved any? Waiting on tables, odd jobs. You've been waiting on tables, Roy? In my spare time, yes. Didn't I always give you enough? I wanted to make some on my own. Look, I have to go, Dad. I hate to leave you like this, but I did think Mother would be... Oh, Roy, before you go, please, step into the phone booth and call your mother. Tell her you're sorry she didn't come. It'll, it'll cheer her up. All right, then. Uh, you'll need some change. It's uh, about a 50-cent call. Got it. I'm coming! You want to say hello to Mother? You bet I do. I want to find out how she feels. Hello, Mariella. Goodbye. Oh, uh, uh, just a minute, Mariella. Roy, I think I will go home this afternoon, if that's all right with you. Sure, Dad. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and Roy, those are pretty girls in the car. Which one is yours? The one with the bangs? You'll meet her. Mariella, how do you feel? Uh-huh. I see. Well, you keep using that calamine lotion. And, and dear, I thought maybe this afternoon I... Oh, well, that's too bad. Have you called the doctor? Well, you do just as you please, dear. Well, I know how uncomfortable it is. Listen, dear, I can't talk anymore. Roy's waiting for me right outside the booth. And you know these kids, impatient as all get out. Yeah. Well, we're going to get a bunch of the fellas and jump in the car and go someplace. Yeah. All right, I will, dear. And I'll, I'll call you sometime tomorrow. All right, take care of yourself. Goodbye now.
Guess the sing will get rained out. It happens every June. Boom! What was that? Just feeling good, bartender. Your name's Eddie, isn't it? Just feeling good, Eddie. Got my son all raised and educated. Finally got him off my hands. Feeling pretty darn good about it. Boom! <laughs> most sensational door storage in any refrigerator. Philco's award-winning dairy bar. Not just shelves on the door, but deep recessed storage space, giving you room for all this food from all these small jars and bottles to as many as four full quarts of milk. Of course, a butter keeper. And here's the exclusive Philco cheese keeper scientific provision for keeping cheese dairy fresh for weeks. You can easily see why it's the three to one favorite with housewives all over America. And it's yours in a full line of refrigerators at prices as low as $269.95. Yes, you can now own this advanced design Philco with Dairy Bar, sparkling Key Largo color, famous Philco quality throughout, for only $269.95. And here is the greatest refrigerator ever built, the Philco Automatic. For the first time, a refrigerator that gives you perfect refrigeration for all your fresh and frozen foods without manual controls of any kind. It's the first automatically air-conditioned refrigerator. This means it's never too moist, never too dry and it achieves the ideal true zone of cold, 38 to 42 degrees automatically. Gives you for the first time the perfect balance of temperature and humidity for all your fresh foods, whether covered or uncovered. It's a proven fact. Wherever you live, your foods stay fresher, tastier, and keep far longer in this revolutionary new kind of refrigerator. There's perfect refrigeration here, too, in this completely separate built-in freezer. It's independently refrigerated, gives you real quick freezing temperature down to 20 below. That's 52 degrees below freezing. Of course, you never have to think about defrosting, for this great Philco defrosts itself automatically without clocks or timers. Visit your Philco dealer tomorrow. See the greatest refrigerator ever built and the greatest value ever offered. The amazing Philco Automatic, with all the features women want most, including the renowned Dairy Bar. In the Philco refrigerator that's so completely automatic, it thinks for itself. Yours from Philco, famous for quality the world over. Turn on the light, Ernie. I thought you were asleep. I keep telling you that I can't sleep, but you won't believe me. Has it stopped raining? Yes. 
hadn't stopped raining when I came to bed. That's why I kept the windows closed. I stop now. How was the commencement? Fine. Just fine. Great speeches. Thought you weren't coming home until tomorrow. I changed my mind. Why? I got to thinking about the office. I missed the office. You know what I did, Ernie, after you called? I went for a walk. Yeah, even with my side. I, I made up my mind it wasn't going to hurt me, and I just went for a walk. Right down into town. Of course, then it started raining, and I had to come home again. Were there many mothers at the commencement? The commencement? Fine. Just fine. Great speeches. I'm in Rome. I can always hear me singing the song. Show me the way to go home. Ring dum dee dum boom. Well, Ernie, I thought I heard you come in. Uh, I couldn't stay away from the place, Abby. Just couldn't keep away. Raring to go. How'd you get along without me yesterday? Oh, pretty good. Have any trouble with Chester? Just is okay, Ernie. He gets by. Uh, as long as you keep an eye on him, I guess. He gets some funny ideas now and then. Like this, a camp to sleep, you mean? <laughs> Did he show that to you? How about that? Yes, he showed it to me. Uh, look at that thing, will you? That's what I mean by keeping an eye on Chester. How does it feel to have Roy all graduated, Ernie? To tell you the truth, Abby, the only thing I feel is I feel like working. I guess you work so long, you just get in the habit. Then you keep on working just for work's sake. Nobody's worked harder than you, Ernie. And I intend to keep on. Where's Chester? Out in the plant. Oh, I want to see him about something. Wait a minute, Danny. You know, I like that acanthus leaf. I like all those designs of Chester's. I think they're swell. I could sell that. Are you kidding, Abby? You couldn't sell yes, those? Yes, I could. You're kidding, Abby. I know what I can sell. Selling's my end of the business. And I say I can sell that acanthus leaf. Well, maybe you could. I guess you could sell anything if you put your mind to it. You could sell junk. But that's no reason why you have to. You think that's junk? Well, I don't think it's what they expect from us. Well, might be a good idea now and then to give them something they don't expect. Well, it's not going to be a campus, Lee, I'm telling you that right now. Sit down, Annie. We've got a reputation for turning out solid traditional merchandise. Will you sit down? Oh, you're talking through your hat, Abby. Now, listen to me. You and I have been partners for 22 years, haven't we? People want a dinner plate to look like a dinner 22 plate. 22 years, right? That's right. Now, we've worked hard. If the truth be known, you've worked harder than me. Time you spent in this office, Annie. Eight thirty in the morning till nine, ten at night. I sometimes wonder if Mary Ella ever gets a look at you. And I didn't work all that time to start turning out cheap second rate real devotion to the business. I've worked hard to keep up my end. The thing is, Ernie, you haven't. You're still doing the same things you did twenty years ago, making the same things, making them the same way. Now that was fine twenty years ago, but times have changed. You're kidding, Abby. I don't mean to criticize. On second thought, I do mean to criticize. I mean to criticize a lot. You resist expansion. You fork your feet at every new design. And you're behind in production because you won't use new methods. That's why you sit here till 10 o'clock every night, because you won't use new methods. You haven't kept up, Ernie. You haven't grown with the business. What's more, you're stubborn about it. Ah, what a guy you are. Regular sweetheart of a guy. I never knew anyone as cheerful as you, Ernie. So all fired, eternally cheerful. I love you. 
but you just haven't kept up. Now, uh, we're going to make these new designs. We'll get them into production right away. Chester's going to handle it. You're still the boss, Annie, the head man, but... Chester's a bright boy. He's, he's got good ideas. Now, uh, he's going to try out some new methods. He spent all day yesterday out in the plant talking to the men. And we're going to give him his head. Okay, Ernie? Ernie? Yes, sure. You know what you ought to do, Ernie? Take some time off. Go places, travel, have a good time for yourself. You deserve it. I just want to... Well, you do just what you like. Just what you like. <laughs> what a guy you are. Hi, Mr. Barger. I didn't know you were in the day. Been here all day, Chester. Well, we've got a lot to talk about, you and I. But I guess it can wait till the morning. Yeah, sure. Ready to leave? Oh, you run along. I got a few things to clean up here. Want me to help? No. These are things I better do myself. Okay, Mr. Barger. You're the boss. Good night, Mr. Barger. Anybody home? Oh, Father Barger, come in. How you been, Mariella? Well, not too good, Father Barger. I've had so much trouble with my hand. Ernie but... home yet? Well, not yet. As a rule, he doesn't come home. Well, and... now, I'll sit down if you will let me. What times do you usually get home? Well, it depends on how much work he's got to do down at the office. How you been, Mariella? Well, not too bad, Father Barger. And you? Oh, I can't complain. Would you like a little iced tea? If you have any. Mariella, unhook the screen. Oh, coming, Ernie. Why do you keep the screen hooked? Your father's here, Ernie. Hello, Father. Oh. What time is it, son? About 5.15. What brings you over this way? Oh, I went out to the cemetery this afternoon. Took some flowers out to your mother's grave. I just stopped by on my way back to break up the trip. Well, that's nice. I wanted to see you. Why, anything wrong, Father? I just wanted to see you. Your mother's been gone 28 years now, Ernie. And, uh... I get lonesome now and again to uh, see someone of my own. You don't come over much anymore. Oh, oh, I don't blame you. You've got a good, full life of your own. But every once in a while, Ernie, I have the need to see you. You have a need to see me, Father? Just to sit and look at you. Well, I'm glad you came by this afternoon, Father. You can't know how glad I am. Oh, 
I just stopped by on my way back from the cemetery. They keep that place fixed up fine out there, Ernie. Lawns all cut, hedges trimmed, elegant looking. How'd you get out there, Father? Oh, I walked. Well, that's almost three miles. Oh, just short walk. Oh, thank you, Mariella. Father's gonna stay to supper with us. Oh, no, son. Girl comes at 5.30. What girl is that? The one Mrs. Rice found for me. Elegant cook. Sets a ample spread, but uh, she just won't sit down to table with me. Stuck up as they come. Stay here, Father. Eat with us. The company will do you good. Oh, she's company, all right. She sings around the kitchen. Talks to me from the door, but she just won't sit down to table with me. We'd like to have you stay, Father. That's uh, that's good tea, Mariella. Remember, Ernie? Mother used to make lemonade. Not to like lemonade on a hot day. I don't know how to keep the place so red up out there, Ernie. With no litter. They got a speed limit now, 10 miles per hour. What time's it now, son? Father, father, listen to me. Roy's all graduated from college now. He'll be pretty much on his own, I guess. And my business, well, it gets along without me. I got the time now, father, and, and the money. I, I'd like to get to know you a little better. I'd like to be able to do things for you, father. A man your age shouldn't have to walk out to the cemetery. I could come and get you every week, every afternoon, whatever you say. I, I'd, I'd take you out there and I'd, I'd sit with you and I'd, I'd talk to you. Oh, it's just a short walk, son. Please, Father, I want to do things for you. A girl should be there by now. Please, Father, let me. What's that, son? You said you wanted to see me. Oh, I did. I feel better for it. Mariella, I'm going. Oh, I'm sorry you won't stay, Father Barger. Oh, thank you, Mariella. But uh, I like my own dining room. I'm used to it. Well, supper will be ready in a few minutes, Ernie. Any word from Roy? No. I'm, uh, I'm making a new dress, Ernie. This one's going to be plain, perfectly plain. No figures, no flowers, just, just a pleat or two. Of course, I'm not going to finish it myself. Miss Alport's going to finish it for me. I'm just cutting it out for her to finish. The, uh, scissors do something funny to my hands. It hurts. Did, uh, did Roy tell you when he might be coming home, or didn't he say? He didn't say. Well, what was the commencement like, Ernie? I tried to picture it all yesterday, but I couldn't somehow. What was it like? Well took place outside, under the trees. We, uh... They had the chairs all set up on the grass for the mothers and fathers. Were there many? There must have been 400. We sat facing the senior class. They had on their caps and gowns and this building with white columns and the band played, and there were speeches. Roy was in the front row, about the tenth one in. That's because his name begins with B, I guess. I spotted him right away. Did he see you? Yes, he did. When he stepped up to get his diploma, he picked me right out of 400 people. 
looked right at me and, and grinned. He shouldn't have done that. Spoiled the dignity, but he did. And then afterwards, I was standing there not knowing where to go and, and Roy came running up to me and, and threw his arms around me and, and sort of hugged me. And some of his friends came by and he, and he introduced them to me. Said, this is my old man. They were all nice kids. Called me Ernie and talked to me, free and easy like. And they made me go to a sing. Picture that if you can, Mariella. I didn't want to go, but Roy made me. Said he wanted to show me off. What a kid. And after the sing, he was supposed to go out with some girl. And he wouldn't go out with her because I was alone. Prettiest little girl you ever saw with bangs. And Roy wouldn't go out with her. Said he'd rather stay with me. Said he didn't care about her. And then we went to this place and drank beer. And we talked. And we talked. You really did have a wonderful time, didn't you, Ernie? It was just as I'd always hoped it would be. Mother! Dad! It's Roy, Ernie. It's Roy. Huh? Roy's home. colors are a keynote of the modern American home. From the living room to the kitchen. And now Philco proudly presents the one range that gives you the color of your choice. The fabulous new color styled Philco electric range. There's a full selection of radiantly beautiful colors to harmonize with your kitchen in the control panel of these new Philcos at no extra cost. This sensational electric range brings you all the famous Philco exclusives, including the now famous Jiffy Griddle. Here is the added cooking capacity of two extra surface units, the added luxury and convenience of high or low heat. So you get the just right cooking temperature, whether for bacon and eggs, pancakes, sausages, grilled sandwiches, dozens of tempting meals. And only Philco brings you broil under glass, the dramatic cooking advance that means no soot, no smoke, no stain. And foods are far tastier broiled this exclusive Philco way. And for the ultimate in automatic cooking, only Philco gives you the quick set timer. It's easier to see, easier to operate. Just set this knob to the time you want your meal finished. This knob to the cooking time required. Then forget it. Your Philco takes over from there. In every way, it's the greatest range ever built. You get real double oven luxury. In the huge banquet oven, you can cook the largest roasts with true even heat. In the thrift oven, you can bake, broil, or roast your smaller meals quickly and economically. See your Philco dealer tomorrow. Let him show you the most advanced electric range in America today. It has all the most wanted features in modern cooking, plus the beauty of color styling, color to harmonize with your kitchen. Yours from Philco, famous for quality the world over. I know what you're thinking, Dad, that we didn't think of you, Louise and I, but we did. On your account, we waited a whole year 
till I got you that precious Bachelor of Arts degree, which you told me yesterday you don't really care about. Is this why you were in such a hurry yesterday, you and that Tom Bates? Tom stood up with us. Tom was in on this too? He stood up with us. The girl with the bangs. I thought you were the one. Sitting in the car yesterday outside the Central. I thought you were the one. Prettiest girl there. I know this was quite a shock to you, Dad. But I meant it to be. You and I have always been pretty close. But it had to end. It was all right when I was a kid. But it had to end. So yesterday, I wasn't quite sure this was the way to do it. I was going to do it, but I wasn't sure. Then yesterday, you said all those things to me, and I knew this was the right way. It had to be a shock to you. You had to find out quick. Boom, like that. Find out about what, Roy? That I don't need you anymore, Dad. You and I can still be great friends, like you said. But I don't need you anymore. Oh, I knew that, Roy. You're on the defensive. You don't have to be. I'm not going to bite you. Your name's Louise. That was my mother's name. Is that why you picked her, Roy? I like that. Gives me a nice feeling of rounding things out, completing the circle, going back to the beginning again. I like that. <laughs> oh, cheer up, son. This is the happiest day of your life. Don't look so down. Mariella, how about getting out that bottle of champagne we had left over from our 25th wedding anniversary, making this a real celebration? Champagne at this hour in the afternoon, Ernie? Yes. Very well. But it won't be cold. Yes, sir, Roy. This is the happiest day of your life, the day you get married. That's the commencement. That's the day it all begins. You're being very nice about it, Dad. Oh, I'm a nice little guy, a regular sweetheart of a guy. Did you ever see anyone so cheerful, so all fired eternally? Sometime in the next few days, if you like, Dad, we'll sit down and talk things over. My future and all that. I don't want to talk about your future, Roy. I'd like your ideas about things, your advice. You've had more experience than... No ideas, no advice. I don't know anything, not a thing. I have nothing to give you. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Oh, look, Roy. Maybe we could get you a job down at the office. We need bright young men down there. That Chester Wilson is practically walking away with the place. No reason why you shouldn't get in on it, too. Mariella! Has Roy told you about my business, Louise? I make dishes. China. Neatest little plant in the Ohio Valley. Wait, I'll show you. You've only got three glasses, Mariella. I don't want any, Ernie. Well, then don't have any. See here, Louise. This is one of our designs. The Scenic America series. Every piece in the set has a different picture. Oh, it's beautiful. The service plates have the Grand Canyon. The butter plates have the cherry blossoms. And the soup bowls have Old Faithful. See, maybe I could give you a set of these for your wedding present. Would you like that? This is the first design we ever made. 20 years ago. My partner wanted to discontinue it after the war. And I wouldn't do it. I went right on making it. I like it. Thanks for the blessing, Dad. I was always a great kid as long as I did things your way, is that it? You and I can be great friends, Dad, sure, as long as I see things your way. Take your money, go to school where you want, get married when you say so. Well, I'm sorry. This buddy-buddy talk doesn't impress me at all. You just want to feel important. You want to think nobody in this world can get along without you. Well, they can. You're not important to anyone. Come on, Louise, let's get out of here. Roy. Yes, Mother.
you want to come downstairs and have some supper? You can't just sit here all night. I'm sorry I broke the plate, Mary Ellen. Well, the plate doesn't matter. If anybody else did that, I'd say they were having a tantrum. I just wanted to hear the noise. Some things can smash without making any noise. I just wanted to hear the noise. I know what happened, Ernie. That's just it. Nothing's happened. It's been the most ordinary two days. Poor Ernie. At last you've seen him for what he really is. Roy, inconsiderate, a little unkind. No, he isn't, Mary Ellen. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. I've known it since he was... I don't know how old. But there was nothing I could do about it. I, I'm not good at handling people. You always took his side, so... There was nothing I could do about it except watch him grow up that way. Roy only did what every kid does sooner or later. But I did myself when I was his age. You got blind spots, Ernie, such blind spots. Well, why don't you come downstairs and have some supper? No. I want to stay here. I don't want to go anyplace else. Nobody needs me, Mariella. The whole world can get along without me. I guess that happens to every man when he gets to be my age. I'm no exception. Sometimes it happens before that, Ernie. Long, long before. And when it does, there's nothing to do but just sit down. And that's what I'm doing. It's not a good feeling, is it, Ernie? And it's just the beginning. Because you can sit just so long. You can be tolerated, paid no attention to, shut out by China factories, arrogant sons, just so long. And then you don't know what to do. You're not clever, you're not pretty. You can't please people, you, you can't talk, you can't make friends. You can't do anything. And you've got to do something. So you get sick. And you stop sitting down. And you lie down. You try to make people love you because you're sick. But they don't pay any attention to that either. That's all. I don't know what happens then. Isn't it funny about my hands, Ernie? There's a rash, but it's underneath the skin. It doesn't break up. Let me see them, Mariella. You can't see them, dear, in the dark. Yes, I can. I can see, Mariella. you and I. Let's us go downstairs and have some supper. All right, dear. Let's.
In just a moment, the names in tonight's cast, and we'll tell you about next week's play. Wherever you go and whatever you do this summer, add to your pleasure by taking along this sparkling new Philco, the most powerful personal portable ever built. It gives you unequaled power and reception. There's never been anything like it. Test after test proves it. On the batteries of an ordinary portable, quality of reception quickly begins to fall off. And while it plays, its performance is in this sub-peak area for practically its entire life. But this dramatic Philco gives you greater power to start with and then delivers flawless, full-tone performance in this peak area all the way out to here. Ten times longer than other personals. Whether on batteries or on AC or DC house current, you get amazing big set performance. See your Philco dealer this week and find out how you can enjoy the world's most powerful personal portable radio for just a few pennies a day. From Philco, world's largest radio and television manufacturer. Now an important Philco reminder. Giving blood is the easiest thing in the world to do. It's a painless and inspiring way to help America's wounded servicemen in hospitals here and overseas. Make a date with your Red Cross Blood Donor Center now. Next Sunday evening, the Goodyear Television Playhouse presents The Rainmaker by N. Richard Nash. With Darren McGavin, Cameron Prudhomme, Paul Tripp, and introducing Joan Potter. Mr. Nash's previous Playhouse presentations include The Young and Fair and The House in Athens. The Rainmaker is the story of a young woman whose last hope for a life of fulfillment and love is wearing thin. And then a man, an amazing man, rides into a life. It's a story of real people caught up in the emotions of love and despair. The Rainmaker, next week on the Goodyear Television Playhouse.